Temple University is increasing security after 18-year-old Amir Jones was shot and killed during a robbery earlier this week near campus. While police are still searching for the gunman, the new... Now, you have to understand this. This was two weeks before the kid got killed. The political science major. This is two weeks before that. And they were going to up security, more campus police and bike patrols, monitor social media. They want to put barriers to deter drag racing. So they're basically going to cordon off this university. Well, what do you do with the kids who live off campus? Like I did when I was in college. So many people I know who live off campus. Temple University is increasing security after 18-year-old Amir Jones was shot and killed during a robbery earlier this week near campus. While police are still searching for the gunman, the new measures Temple is implementing include increasing university police and bike security patrols, working with Philadelphia police to deploy more directed patrols, as well as monitoring social media accounts so the university is aware of any planned activity around campus. Temple says it will also place barriers along Cecil B. Moore and Park Avenue to deter drag racing. I've lived in Philly my whole life, so I'm kind of used to the violence already, which is not a great thing to say, you know what I mean? But I'm happy that they're, like, increasing the protection for everybody because I know it's scary. Like, when we get the notifications every day that it's, like, a shooting on Broad, a shooting on Cecil B, it's kind of crazy. So I'm happy they're taking those precautions. I always find it amazing that Super Woke and, yes, this woman, a sister... At Temple University is 1,075 trillion percent woke. Okay? Sometimes you go, how do you know she woke? Assist at Temple University. Okay? So, it's, I always find it amazing how these woke people, like when that, when it starts getting close to home, they, they fess up real quick. Any other time something happens to somebody else or it's happening in some other area, the police is roughing up brothers for no reason. <laughs> Race soldiers. <laughs> the, the police were formed out of slave catches. <laughs> All this crap, right? They had, they had centurions back in Rome. Okay, they always had, you know, some kind of police force. The three musketeers were police. They used to call them musketeers. They were police officers um, back in the 17, 1600s. Police, police did not form out of slave. But this is the type of stuff they talk. Police formed out of the slave catchers. They get these little talking points off of Facebook or Twitter and they run with them. This girl, though, what she said, and knowing what the gun memorial looks like in Philly, and knowing that her Facebook profile, her Twitter profile is super woke, sun victimization, sun people are the victims of everything, every sun man is innocent, they keep getting framed. Mass incarceration is happening for no reason at all. But now that it's getting really close, it's knocking on her doorstep. And I know she said she lived in Philly and she's used to it. Yeah, whatever. This girl wasn't outside. This this she ain't, this ain't no around away girl. She wasn't hanging with Shaniqua and Quashela and Peaches and. Dorica are out there on the corner at the she was in the house studying. I've lived in Philly my whole life, so I'm kind of used to the violence already, which is not a great thing to say, you know what I mean? But I'm happy that they're like increasing the protection for everybody because I know it's scary. Like when we get the notifications every day that it's like a shooting on broad, a shooting on Cecil B, it's kind of crazy. So I'm happy they're taking those precautions. The university says its walking escort program is available for students, faculty, and staff. Just call 8-WALK from a campus phone or the number on your screen. To
Think about this. At the home of CRT, where CRT was cultivated, students now have a hotline they can call where someone will escort them, will walk with them where they got to go. And I'm hoping that person is armed, and I'm hoping they're uniformed. These people better be uniformed and armed. But just think about that. At the the home of CRT, and it's I actually hit one. If you think that is kind of karmic that this is happening there, you know, I, I, if you really think about it, like where what better place could this happen? Where, name a better place for this to happen at. The university says its walking escort program is available for students, faculty, and staff. Just call 8-WALK from a campus phone or the number on your screen, 215-777-WALK for those using their cell phone. Than a mile away from that, someone shot and killed a Temple student just blocks off campus. And Eddie, they think this was a robbery? Yeah, that's right, Jason. Police have identified the student as 21-year-old Samuel Collington. He is from Prospect Park, Pennsylvania. I talked to one of his close friends on Facebook Messenger who said he's the president of the Political Science Society at Temple University. He had big The president of the Political Science Society. And listen, my wife majored in that. I have friends who majored in that. The amount of work it takes, the amount of <laughs> hours you got to spend. And then he was going to grad school. You you definitely go to grad school in that in that major. Like you don't just it's not over after undergrad. Like <laughs> that's just the that's just the beginning. So this kid had a ways to go, but he was on the right path. And just snuffed out by some sun thugs, man. For no reason. Just like the kid in, um, at the University of Chicago we covered, the Crouching Tiger um, kid, a few weeks ago. Just like the guy that the two basketball players robbed last week in Atlanta. He was, in, he was just graduating from college. He was about to graduate from college, too. And this guy was probably woke, because Temple, if you know, that's where Mark Lamont Hill and other members from the three-name gang, <laughs> as, uh, as Glenn Lowry calls him, the three-name gang. You know, because when you're you an intellectual son man or son woman, you have to have three names. You know, Michael Eric Dyson. <laughs> you know, you have to... You, Two names, two names ain't good enough. You have three. Um, but this guy's done. His story's oh boom. And Temple is in Philly, and it's in a part of Philly. It's in North Philly. It's in a part of Philly that's very dangerous. And. A friend of mine, y'all know DC Hotep. His son is, is is will be graduating next year, and he's looking to go to a school. And I told DC Hotep, I said, man, because he Temple's high on his list. I said, man, don't send your son to Temple, man. Wait till Philly cools down, because Philly's just such a dangerous place. He'll be fine, I guess, on the campus. I thought these kids were gonna be fine on the campus. But lately, so much stuff is happening. As you know, we cover Philly a lot, a great deal on this channel. So you guys are abreast of what's happening in Philly. I don't have to go into that. But um, these kids, they're not safe anymore. Because just because, you know, you got campus, the campus usually, you know, insulates the kids. I, I went to college, and it's, it, it, to a degree, the campus insulates you from what's going on in the city. But... Not in a city like Philadelphia that's just a killing field. 
Talked to one of his close friends on Facebook Messenger who said he's the president of the Political Science Society at Temple University. He had big dreams. He was about to graduate next month. They had plans to go on to law school after that. This happened right at 2 in the afternoon, Jason. 2 in the afternoon in the 2200 block of North Park Avenue, less than four blocks away from campus and a freshman dorm. No arrests have been made tonight, but this has... Who's surprised no arrests have been made tonight? And look at his mural. Look at that one little teddy bear this guy got. He was on the verge of being a great man. In five, ten years, he was going to be, he, he was going to go to law school and <laughs> he was going to get woke and he was going to try to free a bunch of <laughs> sudden men who killed people back in the 80s and the 90s. <laughs> Go uncover a bunch of, oh, well, we looked at his case, and uh, the judge, um, the judge, uh, <laughs> we looked at the judge's records, and he convicted a lot of son people, so we think he's a racist, so now we want to throw out all his, <laughs> all his rulings, or we looked at the jury, and the jury was all white, and, um, you know, that means that it was racist, so, or the cop who arrested him, um, <laughs> He's a Trump, he's a Trump supporter, so you know means he's racist. So we gotta um, look back at all his arrests. That's how. That's really what Kim Kardashian and them do. That be the evidence they have in a lot of these cases. Well, over the years, somebody got intimidated into changing their testimony. That be the evidence they got in a lot of these cases. And, you know, I can't even be mad because the dudes done served their time. <laughs> a lot of times the dudes done served 30, 40 years, but, so, but still, like, whatever. That's the type of lawyer this guy was going to probably grow up to be, being the fact that he went to Temple, which is just the wokest. I mean, Temple's got to be the wokest school on the planet. If you can think of a woker school in the Temple on the East Coast, tell me. Put it in the comment section, please. Afternoon, in the 2200 block of North Park Avenue, less than four blocks away from campus and a freshman dorm. No arrests have been made tonight, but this has shaken up the entire Temple campus. It happened quite often down here, and it's horrible because um, you heard that quite a lot. People kind of get panic. Um, if you go like a couple blocks away from it, you're probably going to get shot or get robbed or probably get threatened. And I get it. When I say it, it's like, oh, man, you hate yourself because they know who's doing it. See, the thing about it is they know who's doing it. The the the, the pro-wax and the whole teps that show up in the comment section. There's been no pictures of, of any suspects. But they even they know who's doing it. Everyone knows who's doing this. But this guy tells you, man, like straight up. Like it's bad for them kids over there. Until they go to Temple. Temple's in the city. Along with a lot of other schools, but Temple's like in a hood, a dangerous hood. Um, <laughs> wow. I, I'm going to just let him tell you. It happens quite often down here. Um, it's horrible because... Um, you heard that quite a lot. People kind of get panic. Um, if you go like a couple blocks away from it, you're probably going to get shot or get robbed or probably get threatened. A spokesperson for Temple did send us a statement saying that the thoughts and prayers are with his family, the entire Temple family, and that this is a tragedy for everyone involved. No arrests have been made as of yet. Live at police headquarters, Eddie Kadem, Fox 29 News. Thank Jason, you, Eddie. And turning we begin with this, a city in crisis. Two more young lives lost to Philadelphia's gun violence. A college student killed just off Temple's campus, and a 16-year-old shot eight times. This should be the biggest story literally in the country. What's going on in Philadelphia? This is the biggest story in the country. The amount of women that are getting killed is astronomical. The amount of kids that are getting killed is astronomical. Now the amount of college students that are getting robbed, beaten, and attacked is astronomical.
This is the biggest story in the country, and I'm proud to say that we're the only ones covering it um, on YouTube and, you know, basically anywhere. Um, but I still have to cover the whole nation. But I'm going to stay on top of this Philadelphia story for you guys, man, as much as possible. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the PayPal Cash App Super Chat, share these videos. We begin with this, a city in crisis. Two more young lives lost to Philadelphia's gun violence. A college student killed just off Temple's campus and a 16-year-old shot eight times. Thanks for staying up with us. I'm Rosemary Connors. The college community at Temple University, as you can imagine, is on alert and on edge as the city's gun crisis deepens with no end in sight. The student's name is Sam Collington. His mother shared these pictures of her son with us. He was on track to graduate from Temple University this spring. NBC 10's Danny Freeman tells us more. Rosemary, tonight I had the opportunity to speak with the mother of 21-year-old Sam Collington, who was gunned down not far from the heart of Temple University's campus. His mother describes her son as an outstanding human being, an Eagle Scout, bright, gifted, and talented, and beloved by folks in his Delaware County community. And this morning, he was at home packing his clean laundry to come back to school after the Thanksgiving break. This is 21-year-old Sam Collington. A Temple student, a college fellow working for the city of Philadelphia, and now one of the 500 plus people who have been killed in our city this year. Please hold on to your children and love them. According to police, Sam was walking down North Park Avenue at around 1.30 this afternoon when a man shot him twice in the chest and killed him. Neighbors say the area, about four blocks away from campus, has tons of Temple students. But Think of this, kids. Because what they teach, you don't understand what they teach at Temple. CRT was coined and founded on the Temple campus. Just to give you a a, um, a feel of what's what, of the of the college that that we're talking about, CRT was incubated there. That's the home of CRT. Like what you see now in other places, Temple was doing ten, fifteen years ago. That's where they worked out all the kinks. That's where they created it. That's where that's the the lab in which it was this diabolical thing we know as CRT was created, Temple University. So this guy's been inundated. This kid has been inundated with wokey wokeness. Okay. Woke this, woke that. The Sun Man is a victim and. He has no agency. Everything the Sun Man does is because something else that happened to him. And he doesn't have enough of this. He doesn't have enough of that. He's killing because he doesn't have money. He's killing to get bread for his family. He's killing because the legacy of slavery. He's killing. Everything is something else. Nothing is the Sun and to think when he when that brother rolled up on him and shot him dead like a dog in the street, and he's laying on the ground and he hears this the brother's footsteps just running away off into the night. He knew, like, whoa, these brothers are not like victims. <laughs> like this, these these are psychos out here. Maybe we do need more police and maybe uh, we do need stiffer penalties to try to discourage this type of behavior. You know, <laughs> stiffer penalties to discourage this type of behavior. Yeah, and these brothers grew up in some rough neighborhoods. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's messed up. And I feel bad for them. However, <laughs> like, until we fix all of the problems of the world, until then, <laughs> we need law and order. And this brother, <laughs> coming from Temple, and he was going into law school, there's no way he was going to be anything but a woke lawyer, a social justice lawyer. And I, 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 my heart goes out to this kid because she's so young and impressionable. 
He's not an old pasty lip. He's a young pasty lip. And really didn't get a chance to, you know, see what was really going on. Like, these sun men are crazy. They always have been. But now, since the summer of Floyd and the Blackistanian spring, it is insane. He's just running up on people and killing them. And I told you guys this stuff was going to start happening. I told you guys. According to police, Sam was walking down North Park Avenue at around 1.30 this afternoon when a man shot him twice in the chest and killed him. Neighbors say the area, about four blocks away from campus, has tons of Temple students. But you should be able to be safe no matter where you are, what color you, your skin is. Tonight, a spokesperson for Temple said this is a tragedy in every sense of the word. Our thoughts are with the victim's family, friends, and the entire Temple community during this tremendously difficult time. Sam's reach extended to City Hall as well, where he was a college fellow with the city commissioner's office. Commissioner Omar Sabir saying in a statement, quote, Samuel was an incredibly talented and engaged young man. During his brief time with our office, Samuel exemplified an incredible passion for engaging voters and was an indispensable member. Engaging voters. Now, what kind of voters do you think he was engaging? And who was his voters? Who was he trying to get people to vote for? In Philadelphia. Hmm? Him and City Commissioner Omar Sabir. Hmm? Who was he out there trying to get people to vote for? Who was he procuring votes for? Who was he recruiting voters for? Hmm? You already know. He got killed by a Biden supporter. I'm sorry this happened to this kid. However, this type of stuff is going to keep happening. Just because of their proximity <laughs> to the element. Like these people in the cities, these 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 these, these do-gooder, nice, these nice gliders that just want to fix everything and Get people to vote for, you know, progressive policies and, you know, everybody's racist but me. Their proximity. It's it's cool to do that if you live out in the suburbs. You know, and you come to the, come to the city and you park your car in the deck, the parking deck, and then you... Go to your office, then you after work, you come back out into the parking deck, and then you straight to the highway. It's easy to do that. But when you're in the thick of it, when you're in North Philly in the trenches, living in the hoodie hood, <laughs> your proximity to the element is too close. And, 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 and a guy like this is, he can't compete with somebody like that'll just run up and shoot you. None of us can. What, what, what would have a gun had done? To, what would a gun have done for this kid? Think about it. Let's think about it. Are you two way people? Okay, he has a gun. He sees the sun man, and he just pulls out a gun on the sun man. He'd be protesting the street. That son man could go down to the news station and talk about, oh, God, I just pulled a gun on because I'm a black man. Or the son man pulls out his stuff and shoots him dead. Or he's just walking and he sees the son man and the son man comes and shoots him dead. And his gun's still in his holster. He dies with his gun in his holster. There's, there, there's nothing you can do to compete with a guy that'll just walk up and blow your brains out. Uns unsolicited, unprovoked, for no reason. What can you do with that? Sam's reach extended to City Hall as well, where he was a college fellow with the city commissioner's office. Commissioner Omar Sabir saying in a statement, quote, Samuel was an incredibly talented and engaged young man. During his brief time with our office, Samuel exemplified an incredible passion for engaging voters and was an indispensable member of our team. 
On campus, students received the notification of a shooting and were shaken. Like Temple's like lit, lit at night, but when you're like off campus, it's like it feels like less safe. Uh, sometimes it feels like we're in danger as students, but like we can't really control it. See, these kids know they're in danger. You can you can say, well, no, it's not that bad. These kids know they're in danger. They know this. And it's, don't get me, this did not just start with 2020. It's always been a little sketchy up there. But now, it's crazy. Like, I would not send my kid to Temple. I would not. And I'm not saying that they can, they're not going to kill every student on campus, okay? It's just the stress that your kid has to go through knowing that, like, dang, I really can't leave the campus. Like, I'm in this great flagship, historical, trendy, urban metropolis, and I got to stay on the campus. If I leave the campus, I may get mugged, I may get robbed, I may get beaten, I may get sucker punched. I may get hit with a straight bullet. I may just get caught, have to duck behind some cars with somebody shooting. I may, you know, you get dirty looks from people. I may, you know, be aggressively panhandled. From a girl, I may get, you know, harassed and catcalled and fondled or whatever. On campus, students received the notification of a shooting and were shaken. Like Temple's like lit, lit at night, but when you're like off campus, it's like, it feels like less safe. Uh, sometimes it feels like we're in danger as students, but like we can't really control it. Now at this time, police have not made any arrests, but Sam's mom tells me that she will do anything to make sure. That How do you find a suspect or a motive? How do the police piece this together? When some guy just comes up and shoots another guy at 1.45 in the afternoon. There's no robbery. There's no took this guy's stuff. It's just, I mean, the police are going to need a tip from the community. There's no way they can, they don't have nothing to work with. The guy didn't have any enemies. There's no, what do the police have to work with? Nothing. Brought to justice, she says for her family, this has been a travesty like you have no idea. From Temple University, Danny Freeman, NBC 10 News. Less than one mile from where the Temple student was murdered, Sam Collington, a 16-year-old boy was also shot and killed in North Philadelphia tonight. Somebody shot the teen eight times near 4th and Diamond Streets. That shooting happened around 8 o'clock this evening. The teenager went to the hospital, but he did not make it. Police tell us they did not find a gun, and right now nobody is in custody. Earlier this week, the city hit the unprecedented milestone of 500 homicides. These latest murders now surpass that number.